www.weather.com. Hi folks, Mike with LearnLeather.com here. Today I want to talk to you about something that I find uh, extremely important when it comes to carving leather and that is beveling. Now there are dozens of beveling videos on YouTube, all of which have their valid points. The different take that I have when it comes to beveling is I don't like to see core showing in my leather. I did some cuts earlier to demonstrate what I am talking about. This is the core showing. You can see that bright line in the center here and here. And while the bevel looks nice, the core looks terrible. So how do we avoid that? <clears throat> And why do we avoid it? And the reason I avoid it is I think it looks terrible, as I've said before. And in order to do carving like this, where you're having very fine details, you wouldn't want the core showing in these fine details and wrecking the illusion of depth or the actual depth that you get. Plus, I like to emboss, as you can see. And if you try to emboss leather with that split wide open and that core showing, it's, it's horrible looking and you can never hide it. So I developed, well, I didn't develop anything, I stumbled onto it <laughs> through trial and error, but basically my mantra is cut less and bevel more. What do I mean by that? <clears throat> if you take a big, wide swivel knife blade like this and you do what everybody is taught at the beginning and that is try and cut one th third to one half through the leather you end up with a cut, this is 10 ounce, I'm trying to cut halfway through. You end up with a cut that you can already see the core in there. Now if you were to try and emboss this, even the slightest bit, it just creates the Grand Canyon right there. You can see that no matter what you do, even if we bevel that, it'll look like those other ones I just showed you. So, as I said before, cut less, bevel more. Okay, what do we mean by that? Well, here's how I do it. First, I start with a blade that is less likely to cut deeply. This is a low angle blade by Peter Main. And it has a wide um, angle of attack like this, as opposed to this with your edge geometry. And the low angle in this regard just makes it slightly easier to move around on the leather. The main, form, main point of this is the wider angle of the cutting geometry as opposed to the narrow angle that you will find on some other blades. Now, swivel knife blades come in all shapes and sizes, and you will eventually find a preference for your style. I happen to prefer blades that have very little angle in both directions, uh, but I definitely like blades that have a wide cutting profile, and here's why. We're going to take this Peter Main blade and we're going to put it right next to this other cut. I'm going to push just as hard and try and cut halfway through. Same pressure, but already you can see the difference in the cut. And this has to do with the blade geometry. This one slices way down deep and you see that core. This one, even though I pushed just as hard, it almost doesn't allow you to cut that deeply. So if we were to bevel this line, what would happen? Let's find out. Now, another thing that I do on almost all of my carving is what I call swivel beveling. And this is a trick that I learned from uh, Chris Slickbald. He calls it pre-beveling. I call it swivel beveling because it's much like operating a swivel knife. Basically, you put your, your smooth beveler into the cut and you run it down that cut like a swivel knife. It also works great if, for example, We'll go over here. You want to open up a curved cut like this. Same thing. You put the blade of the beveler, the tip of the beveler, into the cut. And you can move it around these curves very easily, just like a swivel knife. And if you're clever, and you've done this a few times, you end up with a lovely bevel in a fraction of the time that it would take to do it with a standard thing. Now, 
why would we n never use this or why would we not use this all the time because there are things that you need to bevel more deeply borders or you want to add texture to that etc it's very difficult to drag a textured beveler through a cut so here's the one with a big open core showing here's the peter main blade with very little core showing if any and we're going to bevel that now <clears throat> what i have here is a steep checkered beveler this one happens to be by barry king and here we go now you'll hear on many of the other videos you know don't put your tip in here hovered above you can put the tip in there and then do it move over half the tool do it move over half the tool it just takes more time if you want to speed up your tooling learn to hover over the leather just a little bit like this and then move as you go especially with checkered tools it makes life a lot easier because if you try and move them they stick so we're going to bevel now oops it's getting away on me here if you look you can start to see the core showing and if you bevel deep enough with anything you probably will get the core to show because you're pushing down past the limits of the uh, grain side of the leather but let's try something different instead of a steep checkered beveler let's try a standard this one happens to be uh, black crack bob beard uh, if you want the tool number, it is an LTD, whatever that means. So, here we go. Now, this makes a big bit of difference in how this bevel looks. You can see it between the steep beveler and the more shallow beveler. The core still shows a little bit, but it's not nearly as bad as if we had done the same thing with this deep cut here. So we're going to move on to the last type of beveling, which is figure beveling, which is a big flat BF8, and do the same. So. Once again, you can see the difference in the angles here if I hold it in the light properly. Steep, standard, figure. If you look closely, you see the core in there. Even with the low angle blade if you push too hard. So, back to the mantra. Cut less, bevel more. Now we're going to take the same pier main blade and make a line with reasonable pressure, we'll go a little bit longer. We're going to do the same trick with the swivel beveling because it makes my life easier. Do it again, smooth it out. Flip back around and go back to our steep beveler. Here we are. I'll just move right to the standard size beveler, standard angle beveler. And since we're dealing with checkered, I will go to a low angle checkered figure beveler, matter beveler, same effect. Here we go. transition all right now what have we got we have steep standard 
figure and we have no core showing. Now in figure carving, if we want to emboss this, we want to raise this leather up a little bit from the back, we can do that and the core doesn't show. And that is the goal. Can we bevel this deep more deeply? Absolutely, we can. Now, does this mean that you need to have a Peter Main low angle blade to do this? Absolutely not. It just makes your life a little bit easier. The reason it makes your life easier is that you don't have to think about it so much because the knife prevents you from going too deep with minimal pressure. Whereas a standard blade, if you put minimal pressure, you get a much deeper cut. And for floral carving where you want to have some nice decorative cuts that you want to open that leather up so that you can see okay that's great nothing wrong with that at all but we're going to assume that that's not why you're here so can you do this type of beveling with a standard blade the answer is yes here's how with your knife you're going to cut your line barely cutting the surface it's almost as if you're just drawing a line on your leather without actually cutting into it, without any pressure hardly at all. Now, how does it work? This is where this swivel beveling will come into play. With a sharp blade and a light cut, it doesn't open the leather much to get a beveler in there. So I will open it a little bit with this beveler in my swivel bevel technique. Once again, you might be tempted to stop there. Okay, if that's what you're looking for, no problem. Now, steep beveler. <clears throat> All right, standard. weight out of the way a little bit. Hope you can still see. All right. So again, no core showing. In here, steep, standard, figure. They all give you a nice bevel. It's not particularly straight, but for demonstration purposes, I think it suffices. Um, we can certainly clean this up if need be. Uh, make it straighter. In fact, let's just touch it up here with our spoon. I don't particularly like things that don't come out right. So, um, something that may help you in your leather carbon career is a little bit of OCD to make sure that things are nice and straight. So, all right, as you can see, with a standard blade, standard carving blade, this one happens to be by Leather Wranglers, excellent knife. You can do the same kind of beveling without the core showing, just by cutting less and beveling more. If we want to add more depth to this, there's a variety of ways that we can do that. I will show you one of them. Let's say we want to matte bevel this line up here, okay? So it's figure beveled, but we want to add a little bit of extra depth around our subject matter, which happens to be over here. I will take a standard checkered beveler right in that cut. Moving around here, stand by. And we'll clean that up too. And now you have a figure beveler with a little bit steeper bevel around there. Gives you that little bit more depth that you might be looking for with also maintaining this nice flat matter beveler look over here. This might be important to you if you're trying to smooth out your backgrounding around a subject. So once again, back to the beginning, cut less, bevel more. Cutting deep is great 
in some aspects and if this is your style by all means continue but if you're looking to get rid of this core showing which i think is unsightly cut less bevel more once again mike dale learnleather.com please check out the website and all of the other videos that we have available there will be more content coming thanks for joining us learnleather.com